Hey guys, so this is going to be a redo of the demo we did in class, rock, paper, scissors. This is just showing you some of the uh, options you have when it comes to making a decision using ifs and tests and all. So uh, as you can see, I've got the basic set up because, again, this is not what we're emphasizing in this demo. So I've got my import. I've got my skeleton all set up. I've got my scanner. A lot of you guys made the mistake of just copy pasting the code I gave you. That's OK. I give it to you for a reason. But you have to remember that the scanner is a variable. And so I can name it whatever I want. Usually, yes, my default is scan. But I've been mixing it up on the examples I give you just to remind you that it is a variable. They can name it whatever they want. So today I'm using input for my scanner. I've added some comments in here just to let you know what parts are going on so like we've got our scanner up here here's the title screen most games you'll recall have those I've got the menu that I'm presenting to the player and then I've just got their input collecting okay all that stuff commonplace we've done that several times you should be good at that let's get into making up our decisions so with rock paper scissor we've got two players they've got three option each which means we have nine tests going on and we literally just have to define each of them so I've got my variables up here, play one and play two. So that's what my tests are going to be. If play one is one and play two is one. Okay. If they're both the same, then tie. Done. And then I just go through the list. Okay. So there's one, one. One, two, and one, three. So one and two, uh, if I wanted to, I could expand this and say the rocks bounce really off one another. You know, if you wanted to give it some kind of flavor text, it's optional. It depends on the assignment, it depends on what the client wants, it depends on what you yourself need to say. Here I've got rock and paper. So in this case, player two wins. Paper covers rock. Okay. Here I've got rock and scissors. This time player one wins. Rock crushes scissors. There we go. I got my first three tests done, and everything else is just repeating it. So I'm going to copy this whole thing now. So there's player one, one. And now I just manipulate these. So this is when player one does paper. Okay. Uh, this time the tie is here. And this is where player two wins. And back up here at the top. Okay. So I've got rock and paper again. This time. Player one wins. Uh, I mixed them up. Uh, paper covers rock. Okay. Down here, two and three, I've got paper and scissors. Oh, no, got there. Scissors cut paper. Okay. Now, right here, uh, papers flick gently in the breeze. I don't know, just something that's very innocuous. You know, nobody won. It's a tie game. All right. Uh, rock and paper. Oh, that should be player two. I mixed it up all the way. Okay. Paper and paper, paper and scissors. Yeah, there two wins. Wait, that can't be right. Paper and rock. Two wins. Yeah, I did mess up. Yeah, there we go. All right, so that's paper. Sorry, I was getting confused. Okay. And then I just need my last three. Let me grab that. 
Okay, so this is where I get player one chose scissors. Okay, rock and scissors. Uh, that's going to be right here. This would be player two wins. Uh, scissors and paper. That'll be right here. Player one, and if both choose scissors, I don't know. Yeah, I'll just leave it there. Okay, so there are my nine tests, okay? That would work. They're all if statements, which means they're always going to connect. Um, they're going to test every single one each time. I do have some execution that could be combined, you know, like we did in most of the classes. We could combine all the ties. Um, if you wanted to, if you're just printing like this flavor text that gives kind of the descriptive thing, each of those happen two times. If you're going to do uh, player one wins, player two wins, or ties, there's only three options, but your tests get infinitely longer. Um, it's up to you really how that goes, okay? This is what you need at most, or at minimum. Um, uh, like I also showed in some classes, if you decided to add these as else statements, then these are all locked together in one if block. It still tests each one, but stops as soon as it finds something true. If I have a lot of else ifs, it's always good practice to... Uh, add a final else statement. This is considered the catch-all or the default. If it makes it all the way through all these other tests, we have some kind of message which hopefully the user will never see, but that tells us, the programmer, something happened. So again, we're supposed to be testing our code before y'all turn it in to me. You run it a couple times, make sure it works and all. Not all of you are, but we're working on that. Um, this is just something that'll trigger. So like if I ran this and I was trying to break the code, not following the rules, if I said something like, uh, what do I choose? I choose four. That's not an option. Uh, if I choose, eh, we'll say one on that one. So input error. So that's just something for my benefit as I'm writing the code, testing it, make it works beforehand. Okay. So these are your if tests. Very simple, very rudimentary. Uh, nothing crazy going on here. The other way a lot of people were asking was to do it this way with nested loops. So this is the same thing I did over here. If you notice, I grouped all of these are where player one picked rock over here. Player one picks rock, and then I judge everything based on player two's input. Okay, down here, player one picks paper. And then my tests, which are much shorter now, only compare player two's option. Okay, so I have to figure out what player one did, then go inside, figure out what player two did, and that one tells me each of those. I even added an error inside of each one of these to let me know which player made the mistake. Okay, if I go all the way down, Here's a mistake if player one made the mistake, okay? Again, else ifs all the way up, and then I always end with a else. It's just proper thought process logic just so it doesn't just end the code, and you're just like, what happened? You know, this at least tells us where something happened because these are all checking play one, so that means that variable or some of those tests erred. So that tells us, a, that gives us an indication on where to start looking, okay? Uh, not the only two ways to solve this by any means, um, but these present the two major choices you have, whether you like ifs, if else, or nested ifs, okay? Thank you. Have a good one.